Hey guys, just a heads up, my next convention appearance will be at Thy Geekdom Con in Oaks, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philly, from May 26th to the 28th. It's also next to Valley Forge, stop by for a history lesson. I'll be presenting two panels, Pokemon Trivia, a Kahoot style game show, and a mock trial for Attack on Titan. The People vs. Aaron Yeager. If you can't catch me there, I will be at Fan Expo in Philly the week after. I will be presenting a panel about Matthew Hopkins, the inspiration behind Emperor Bellows. Oh, and my merch shop is open on Spreadshirt, though at the moment you can only buy a couple of things. Anybody know how you can make the logos bigger? Now on with the video! Woo woo woo! You hear that? That's the sound of 2015 pulling you over, people! Suck it! Is it just me, or is PC Principal pretty hot? Nice. Wait, not nice. Why is it all the villain characters are hot? First Emperor Bellos, and now this dude. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about South Park. Or more specifically, Peter Charles Principal, aka PC Principal. Yes, according to Board Girls, his real name is Peter Charles. Wait. He's one of those teachers that lets you call him by his full and or first name. Okay, that's pretty cute. Now, one of the most contentious parts of the later seasons of South Park is how the show suddenly became super serialized. And I don't want to make this joke because it's corny, but I am super serial. Some people view the serialization as a welcome change. Others think it doesn't belong in a show like this. Me, personally, I don't mind. So long as it doesn't pigeonhole the show. The only time I really ever hated it was when season 20 did the presidential election. Even if I've grown to enjoy it over time, it really felt like they did not have a backup plan and left a lot of plot frights dangling. However, that's a discussion for another day. Usually the story-driven episodes have everlasting changes that the town rarely recovers from. PC Principal is one of those changes. Some people believe he's funny, and there's still plenty more to do with him. Others think he's overstayed his welcome, and we should have Principal Victoria back. As I am a mentally ill, mixed-race Latino female who lives in the inner city, I am the only person allowed to make fun of him, because I know for a fact he won't break my legs. I was born pigeon-toed, and I have a bunion. Does that count for anything? So, let's discuss. PC Principal is a modern character in South Park. Normally, audiences don't like it when you add a mainstay character to a show, long after the premiere. I mean, look at Fairly Odd Parents. But with PC Principal, many don't mind. He first appears in the episode Stunning and Brave. Recently, Principal Victoria has been fired. On the surface, it's because a student referred to rape as a hot Cosby, and she did nothing about it. The truth? Mackie did not like her. 18 years of answering to you. 18 years! If you had problems with me, why didn't you just talk to me? You never listened! Really, that's it. To make South Park more progressive, they have hired PC Principal to replace her. PC Principal's goal is to clean up the school and make it more progressive and accepting and politically correct. All right, listen up. My name is PC Principal. I'm here because this place is lost in a time warp. Which honestly, the first two, South Park, the school at least, does not need it. Yeah, somebody should do something about people like Cartman or even Garrison, but most of the kids are pretty accepting and lenient already. If anybody needs guidance, it's the parents. Still, PC Principal vows to succeed. What I like about the first scene is how PC Principal attempts to help the town by bringing up their failures. But, like I said, they really don't need the help, and he refuses to see any nuance. Like this part right here. A chef, person of color, who the children had sing soul songs, and who the children drove to kill himself. No, he got brainwashed by a cult. And that's two days detention for you, young man. We'll see you at four. Maybe you should have brought up how the kids thought the South Park flag was not racist because they saw a person, not a person based on race. 
It even melted Chef's fart. Come on, he even brought up the bathroom episode? People claiming to be advocates of transgender rights, but really just wanting to use the women's bathroom. Which is like the one good time they've ever talked about trans rights. PC Principal's preferred method of dealing with intolerant bigots is to assign harsh detentions. And his main victim, Kale. Will uh, Kyle Broflowski report to the principal's office? Did, did I say that all right? Looks like him and Cartman have something in common. Too bad they could never band together. PC Principal wants to prosecute Kyle because he says... I don't think Caitlyn Jenner is a hero. Well, I mean, she was a reality TV star. How low can you really sink? Gerald makes it worse when he accidentally misgenders Caitlyn Jenner. I'm sure Kyle was just referring to Bruce Jenner as a person. You got a f***ing problem, bro? Or maybe you're the one teaching him to demean women in the first place. Honestly, he might have a point. Remember that episode when Gerald became a dolphin? At a bar, PC Principal discovers there's other like-minded company who hate when marginalized groups are marginalized. What do they have in common? They're all rich white dudes who think they're knights in shining armor. Bro, I had no idea there were like-minded individuals in this town who defended social minorities. We should all hang out. We should totally hang out. Uh, you're not really my type. You're not scruffy enough. You gotta have a beard like Alex Bright. Plus the whole sunglasses indoors thing. You know they can damage your eyes, right? The PC brothers decide to open up a fraternity in order to help spread their tolerant views. And as they offer alcohol, Randy becomes a member. <sighs> you got home pretty late last night. The boys attempt to get rid of PC Principal by having Cartman go Tom Brady on him and frame him for doing to Butters what his Uncle Bud did to him. Why, this is Butters' underwear. What? Oh my gosh, it's got your DNA all over it. However, they find PC Principal's not intimidated, because not only does he know hand-to-hand -hand combat, and he's probably better than Annie, but he's more concerned about the fact that Cartman uses microaggressions. I don't need to tell anyone about this. No, I think we have an understanding. Capiche? Capiche? You're associating Italian-Americans to intimidation tactics? You better watch your microaggressions, bro. Um, you talking to me? You know I'm Italian, right? And it just makes me sick and tired and disrespected when I can't be intimidating because then I'm feeding into stereotypes. So what if I talk with my hands? Oh god, I can't do a good one. I'm Italian and I can't even do a good Italian accent. But talking with my hands, it's easier and it confuses my enemies. You better watch yourself, bruh. Cartman gets his behind kicked and decides to back down. So you're never gonna call me a dirty Jew again? No. I'm going to call you my friend. What? Undeterred, PC Principal tries to get the fraternity bros to teach Kyle a lesson. <laughs> That's ironic. But to give him the benefit of the doubt, Perhaps he did not know Kyle was Jewish. I mean, it's not like Randy could have said something. Or Kyle's last name is Brothlowski. Or even that Gerald wears a yarmulke. Maybe PC Principal is so tolerant that he doesn't see race. When Cartman finds out that Kyle was accosted by the PC Brat Brothers, he's livid and comes out of retirement for one more job. We're going to war with these PC people once and for all. Butters, I'm going to need 200 pregnant Mexican women and some taco launchers. Okay! You know, I still hold true that Kyle brings out the worst in Cartman. This episode's a pretty good example. Cartman launches an assault on the PC frat house, which includes tacos and even Jared Vogel. PG children are in, send in Jared! However, Kyle, thoroughly bullied, decides to simply say that he thinks Caitlyn Jenner is a hero, even if he doesn't mean it. Caitlyn Jenner is a hero. Um, no, she's not a hero. If anybody's a hero, it's Jinx Moonson, Moonsong, one of those, and Laverne Cox. They use their platform to help marginalize people and people who are not themselves. I am allowed to say it. Sorry, Kale. So I guess PC Principal is here to stay, huh? 
Yes, but at least we showed him that sometimes joking about un-PC things can actually be important. Hey, you want to know a fun fact? PC Principal was supposed to die in this episode. I guess maybe Cartman's assault was gonna work or something, but Matt and Trey found him too funny to get rid of, so he was kept, and he's alive to this day. I guess this means he's a recipient of the Elijah Michelson treatment, and one of the most successful, if I do say so myself. Well, debatably, that's why this video exists. Now, I believe the worst thing PC Principal ever did was fire Garrison. Weirdly, it's the right thing to do. If you take away the racism, he's still a horrible teacher. But it led to Garrison becoming Grump, because it practically made him a martyr and gave him more of a platform. As a result of Crump, not Grump, Crump is Canadian Trump, Canadian refugees have been coming to South Park in droves. All right, guy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's going on, friend? Hey, buddy. Another moose head, eh? We should have put up a goddamn wall. Because clearly a small, isolated mountain town is a better place to live over a state like Washington or Minnesota or Michigan or New York. Harrison can't take the Canadian refugees and lets his white privilege show. And that's it! Why don't you Canucks go back where you came from? Ooh, someone's getting cancelled. Did you not forget your previous student was Canadian? <sighs> Everybody forgets about Ike Proploski, including his own mama. BC Principal gives Garrison a warning and tells him to take Canadian language classes. He got up in the middle of my lecture and started playing music. So did you forget that at 8 and 11, all Canadians face East and play Chuck Mangione? During an assembly, Garrison stands up and starts to rage. What do you think And I'm also not afraid to stand up to PC Principal. You, sir, have a pizza face and you suck your mom's- <laughs> Um, no he doesn't, but I'm sure PC Principal does not mind such alternative lifestyles. Garrison gets fired. And I'm sure you can guess what happens next. Because of the influence of PC, South Park becomes much more accepting, on pain of getting publicly embarrassed. They gentrify everything, they police what you say, and they open up a Whole Foods. Oh no, apples there are like $10 a pound. Probably the worst thing PC Principal does this season, besides Fire Garrison, is his actions in the episode Safe Space. Now, as somebody who has a job on the internet and is built upon interacting with people and putting my image out there, I have a weird relationship with this episode. I think the song's catchy and the subplot with Randy and the cashier is hilarious. Oh, won't the kids be thrilled when they get their piece of that big, impressive dollar? But I don't know about the moral. I do think you have to be careful about what you post, but Guys, cyberbullying is a real thing. Have you ever been in the SU fandom? Or the Hell of a Boss fandom? With many celebrities, I think you forget that they typically don't use their own social media accounts. They just use interns or ghostwriters, so this episode doesn't really apply to them. Honestly, one of the best parts of being a fan of Broadway, you have a pretty high chance of meeting your heroes. Unless it's Alex Brightman, but never say never. It's just that the way the message is phrased, it's like they're saying if you get bullied on the internet, you bring it on yourself. What's the matter with you people? You're sad that people are mean? Well, I'm sorry, the world isn't one big liberal arts college campus. Eh, moving on. Cartman comes to PC Principal, sniffling about how people keep posting negative comments on his social media pages. Internet made fun of me and- <laughs> Wow, no wonder Cartman quit Twitter. Instead of suggesting he could disable the comments, because that's a thing, PC Principal decides to get somebody to volunteer, on pain of detention, to help. Mostly by filtering out all the negative comments and making Cartman's page an echo chamber. So what we're looking for is a student volunteer. Somebody who can put the things Eric wants up on the internet for him and also filter through all the comments and make it more of a safe space for him. <gasps> Kinda like Reddit. Because Kyle and Wendy won't do it, the logical solution is to have Butters step up to the plate. 
Mostly because if he gets attention, he also gets grounded. But do I gotta? You want attention? Well, if I get detention, I'll get grounded. Then you start today. The Jask wears Butters down like a precious mower blade. And worse yet, he doesn't even get a thank you. People are actually really stoked on me now. It's a pretty brutal job sifting through all that darkness. However, PC Principal gets carried away and forces Butters to be a social media intern to other bullied people like Steven Seagal, Vin Diesel, Demi Lovato, and Lena Dunham. Oh, poor boy. Lena Dunham alone. And Lena Dunham just put a picture of Russell on Twitter and wants only the positive comments. Their efforts are so successful that they start their own charity. Shameless America, to bring their platform to the rest of the country. Only thing missing is Sally Struthers and they'll be good to go. While Butters is struggling, he is confronted by reality. Literally. Butters, what are you doing? Oh, the man! The man is gonna get me! Who already tried to teach PZ Principal and Co. the downsides of having a safe space. Driven crazy and not willing to take the detention, Butters takes option number three. Yeah! Kid, I get it. Detention sucks. Shameless America holds a charity ball. Don't let the glitz and glam fool you. They only raised like $300. What have you done? You've raised $300 by spending half a million on filet mignon and crystal glasses. Reality shows up and tells them that in order to stay sensitive, they've basically become Reddit. And now Butters is paying for it. Jesus, I, I didn't even think. I guess I asked too much of one kid. They realize they've gone too far and simply outsource the agreement to third world countries. However, there is some good to having PC principal around. In Tweak x Craig, the townsfolk assume the pair are dating, which is bad. Them forcing the boys to basically date, not the fact that they're dating in general. But I eventually want to make a video on this, so I'll hold off. The two get called into PC Principal's office. Alright guys, I know there's been a lot of rumors flying around. Just wanted to check in, see if you have any questions for me. Now he just say it even if he refuses to listen to anything they say. But we aren't. I'm not. I'm not either! That is completely irrelevant. I find it adorable he tried to do the right thing and teach them about affirmative consent. It was a little awkward, but it's the thought that counts. There's not going to be any disciplinary action since they are gay. We want to be supportive, so we're just going to send them on home with some money, all right? Lucky, they never did that for me. Honestly, the best PC principal episodes are the ones where he gets challenged. Like in sponsored content where somebody uses the R word in the school newspaper. Instead of getting mad at that one child, he gets mad at whoever let the word go through. And he gets ready to, in his own words, BREAK THEIR F***ING LEGS! You gonna break his legs, PC Principal? When I made my South Park video on disability awareness, this was the one episode I really wanted to include. I like how it handled the topic about what's considered offensive to some people and what isn't. But that was a project for school and my professor did not think it was that good of an episode. So I had to cut out the section, even though I recorded it and everything. Personally, I think it's because I did not explain my points that well when it came to proposing the idea, but I passed the class, that's all that matters. I'm a little excited I get to talk about it now. PC Principal calls Jimmy into his office. Uh, the reason I need to talk with you, Jason, is because of a very important- It's Jimmy, actually. My name is Jimmy, PC Principal. All right, Jim, thank you. I know it's probably been said before, but I like the way PC Principal calls him that. Well, not really, but think about it. It's like how he's calling him a slur. PC Principal tries to ascertain why Jimmy would allow such a word to be used in the school newspaper, despite being disabled himself. That was an op-ed piece in the paper written by a first grader as the editor of the paper. I didn't think it was right to censor the words the student used. I don't want people to be afraid of words if it stops them from having a dialogue. Which is pretty noble. I think it helps the first grader did not mean it towards, say, another student. He just said it in general. I don't know if that would be considered worse, but that's part of why I think Jimmy let it stand. Quickly, we learn that PC Principal, the most PC person in the universe, has 
I assist towards people with disabilities. Mostly, he's uncomfortable around them. Which even Jimmy says he does not care about, so long as PC Principal is making an effort to be accepting. Are you uncomfortable around people with disabilities? That's okay, lots of people are. No, I'm not. I am very not uncomfortable. To try and maintain control, PC Principal says that Jimmy can't publish the school paper in school without the former's permission. Jimmy finds a way around it. <laughs> Suck my <laughs> PC Principal! Good for you, kid. What makes this episode 10 times funnier is the fact that PC Principal could just stop whenever he wants. Jimmy doesn't care. Nobody cares except for his frat brothers. And the uncomfortable thing? Maybe it's because he hasn't been around people with disabilities, and it's something he's not used to. Doesn't mean he can't try and educate himself. But the idea that Jimmy doesn't care absolutely astounds him. But why would a person with a disability not see that what I'm trying to do is actually protect them? Sometimes victims of oppression are so marginalized that they begin to sympathize with their oppressors. This kid just needs to be shown he's being an Uncle Abel. You know, this clip from Fish Sticks, I said sticks like sticks and stones, needs to be brought up again. Your ego is so out of whack that it will do whatever it can to protect itself. And people with a messed up ego can do these mental gymnastics to convince themselves they're awesome when really they're just- <laughs> PC Principal tries many ways to correct it, such as bringing in Nathan to parrot the PCBS. That word makes my heart piss its pants. Do you want to ask him what he means by that, or are you just pandering because you're uncomfortable around disabled people? Sound like I said PMS. Okay, the PC dogma, is that better? Even if, as Jimmy puts it, Nathan uses this word hundreds of times a day. I like apples and bananas. And by holding a gala at the PC frat house, where Jimmy learns that while PC principal means well, as misguided as he can be, his frat brothers are not the same. They just use their beliefs to pick up on women and make them sign consent forms. If you scored last night, I need your consent forms. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa, Barker, did you perform? <laughs> There's a different release form, bro. Really destroys the intimacy, fellas. Thankfully, Jimmy has all he needs to take down PC principal. The PC frat brothers make their own safe space, which they can now do because reality is dead, and go on a hunger strike refusing to eat any kind of female organ until their demands are met. All right, that's good. Everyone get inside. Everything past here is safe space. No reporters. Aww. BC Principal realizes just how alone he truly is. The article's 100% correct. But now we can get a lot more <laughs> No, Topher! It's not about <laughs> all right? I mean, your friend has a stupid name like Topher. The only good Topher is Topher Grace. Why would you name your child Topher? You're just setting them up for failure. While attempting to install Nathan as the new editor, PC Principal gets something frightening. What the hell's going on, bro? Okay, this is something I wish got followed up on, because to this day, I still don't understand it. Was PC Principal an advertisement that gained sentience? Hence him being so one note. Is there another PC principal out there and the one we see and interact with is just a clone? Did he start off as an ad but somehow turned human? Something Leslie couldn't fully do? Or was he just a normal human that the ads were trying to confuse? Personally, I think it's the last one considering how they don't really follow up on it and he was able to have children. Besides, while Jimmy does not like him, it was mostly because of his viewpoints, not because he sensed he was an ad. But I don't get why he was in that picture in the first place. They never explain it. Because he told Leslie to be quiet? In order for better understanding, we've asked students of Canadian origin to introduce you to their culture and- Hey, Leslie, shut your f***ing mouth! See, while I don't typically mind when South Park does storylines, I do think they keep a lot of plot friends dangling far too long. Shelly reacting to Randy being Lord, the gender war, this. I know, they make things up as they go along, yet you really feel it at times. BC Principal goes on the run to figure out answers. It ends up traveling all around the world, destroying as many ads as possible. 
You mind telling me why you're going around the world shooting up revitalized arts and foods districts? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Eventually, he gets back to South Park and expels Leslie. Permanently. Yes, dude! You go, dude. As Principal Victoria is off with Officer Bar Brady fighting the ads, PC Principal decides to stay on as Principal. Now, while PC Principal is a force to be reckoned with, some people believe that by this point, he's a one-note character that's absolutely outstayed his welcome. Me, I'm not convinced. Yes, he's still around, but most of the time, it's the same capacity as Principal Victoria. As in, just a quick cameo to remind us he's still there. There's plenty of episodes he could have been in that he wasn't. Like Dead Kids, which focused on school shootings, or even the Mr. Hankey episode. Yeah, he has that subplot with Strong Woman, but that episode made fun of the controversy surrounding the idea that Apu's an Indian stereotype. What would he think? When PC Principal appears, most of the time nowadays, it's usually just to be like, Hey guys, here's a presentation. Okay, here's the mic. Bye. Again, that's mostly what Principal Victoria did. Still, the writers have not forgotten about him. I like how he has a little mini arc of realizing his views might not totally be PC. And that's fine. It starts in the episode, Super Hard PC-ness, which, pardon my French, but that sounds lovely. Is PC Principal gonna do Dallas, or America, or the universe? Because of the events surrounding the current season, PC Principal thinks that the skew, or at least the girls, especially Heidi, Shut up, Kyle, you sound like your mom. <laughs> need a female role model to turn to. So he hires a new vice principal. I'd like to introduce our new vice principal, Strong Woman. Yes, that is literally her name. Honestly, I thought it was like PZ Principal where her name stands for something, or she renamed herself to seem more politically correct. But considering the episode Buddha Box. Okay, okay, last name. Woman. First name. Strong. Maybe it's like a millionaire Matt Davis type situation. Strong Woman is basically PC Principal with boobs. She aspires to be a strong female role model and a proper feminist, and she mostly succeeds. After all, she sometimes can be a little preachy, yet she often has a good head on her shoulders. For example, Kyle, who is starting to hate Canada because he's Sheila Broflovsky's son, thinks Strong Woman will agree with his assessment, only to find she doesn't really care because it's not that big of a deal. That seems kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? What? I mean, it's a slippery slope when we start pointing the finger for our own shortcomings. And as we saw with Jimmy, PC Principal turns into jelly around marginalized groups, and that includes women. It's pretty funny watching the pair interact in this episode. From everyone! I'm sorry, am I not doing this correctly? You felt it wasn't strong enough, me just saying it? Likely because she stands up for herself, PC Principal begins to fall in love with her. Whenever he thinks about her, he hears nothing but Hootie and the Blowfish. Ugh, sucks I can't play it, but take my word for it. So maybe you're having some feelings for her? No, that couldn't be it. We work in the same place, so it'd be impossible for me to like her. I'm thinking there must be some kind of device in my ears. Ugh, why is he in love with her? He can't have those feelings. Dating your co-worker? What is this, Parks and Rec? No, they just air reruns on Comedy Central. Mr. Mackey suggests the best way to get Strong Woman off his mind is to bring in an HR rep, only to find that Mr. Mackey and the rep might have a lot more in common besides head sizes. It's a natural approach, okay? All right, all right. When I read it, you know, first I was like, whoa, okay. All right. This just really makes sense. And Strong Woman actually might like PC Principal, too. Who's ever had inappropriate feelings for a co-worker? While getting ready as the bombs go off in Canada, PC Principal and Strong Woman act on their feelings. <sighs> How disgusting! Now the Vatican is gonna have to send in a cleanup crew. Wait, it's a public school. Even worse. Don't worry, it does get worse. 
to go on dates, they make up scenarios, like taking the student of the month out for dinner. People are gonna see through it. Is it my fault that I found the most amazing, perfect, beautiful woman at work? Nobody will understand. Well, should we order now? Aw, at least they're rewarding butters for his help with Shameless America, finally. While the whole town is out looking for the president, PC principal and strong woman take the opportunity to consummate their love in the woods, instead of at a hotel room or one of their houses or even at the school. Clearly it's more romantic to bang outside with all the dirt and the bugs and the rabies not prisons! Unfortunately, they're, they're spotted, and it turns out PC Principal was sort of right to be worried. They can't be together, they're co-workers! Seriously, PC Principal's kind of hot. Kitty, stay on track! Turns out there are consequences to scoring, without protection. Oh, what a thunk! Strong Woman doesn't want to talk to PC Principal, and worse yet, She's as pregnant as a seahorse. However, Strong Woman doesn't want anybody to think she got knocked up by her boss, despite half the town seeing her in the nude. They lie and say she got pregnant through IVF, like Courtney Cox. Strong Woman goes into labor and refuses to let PC Principal do anything. He can't drive her there, he can't hold her hand in the delivery room, and worse yet, she won't let him be involved in raising their baby. I have worked my whole life! A person little girls could look up to! If those girls thought that I was the type to get knocked up by my boss! I mean, if I were a little girl, I wouldn't mind. You were in love. PC Principal ends up giving birth- not PC- Strong Woman ends up giving birth to not one, but five babies. Three boys and two girls. With no epidural. Her poor reproductive organs. Unless maybe she had like a hypno burp or something. Their names, according to the wiki, are Riley, Bailey, Harper, River, and Emery. Oh, one of them's named after a college. And they're all gender neutral. How PC. However, no matter how hard she tries, she can't hide the fact they are a PC principal seed. They cry whenever they see anything offensive, and they are somehow born wearing sunglasses. Oh, dear. Ouch. Riley said a word that her sister felt was insensitive to Muslims. She just said Abba Daba. Oh, my family calls me that. The Abba part. Wait, are they being insensitive? Three black guys walk into a bar. <laughs> you know, I like the PC babies. I just hate how this now means I can't criticize the show in any meaningful way. Because then people call me a PC baby. Just saying. Thankfully, Strong Woman later allows PC Principal to be in the baby's lives. Provided he hides the fact that he is their father. And merely pretends to be the Manny. AKA the male nanny. Did you not watch This Is Us? Oh, and who's this? I am the Manny. Anyone have a problem with that? <laughs> no, not at all. Wow, he's like John Redcorn. Granted, I feel a little more sympathy for him compared to John Redcorn. Sure, PC Principal slept with a co-worker, but it was still 100% consensual, and he wanted nothing more than to own up to his mistakes, supporting Strong Woman however he could. It's just that she was too embarrassed to let him. Which is kind of understandable, at least from her perspective. John Redcorn slept with a married woman, likely hundreds of times, cheated on her with other women, yet got mad when she slept with her own husband, and kept his mouth shut, relying on others to keep the secret of Joseph's birth, rather than him. Thankfully, the episode Buddha Box exists. Cartman is told by a psychologist that he has anxiety. Granted, I think the shrink meant just anxiety in general, as in the emotion, but as this is Cartman... What it really is more than anything is an excuse to be lazy and lame to everyone around you. Oh my god, that's perfect. Now, you guys know I have anxiety disorder myself. This episode is one of my favorites. I have anxiety! I find it difficult to engage with others! So everyone, shut the f*** up, because my anxiety is up here right now! It helps they're mostly making fun of people who don't care about there being a distinction. 
or use anxiety as an excuse to be an a-hole. Seriously, you don't know anxiety until you've had a full-blown panic attack in public and had to keep quiet and smiling the whole time. As a result of Cartman's antics, a new device goes on the market called Buddha Box. You're supposed to put it over your head when you're nervous. Buddha Box Office, how the hell does Creed 2 do $34 million opening weekend? What's the weather like tomorrow? Oh, it's snowing? I gotta tell Lawrence. I whoa, whoa, hey! Honestly, this device would probably help me when I panic because the first thing I do is reach for my phone and try to focus on another task. It keeps the anxiety at bay. Probably also help people with like ADHD because it would help calm them down. Carbon introduces PC Principal to the Buddha box and he gives one to Strong Woman who needs a break from the babies. Look, you and I have been having a lot of problems. Clearly, what we both need is more quality one-on-one -on -one time with our phones. You know, I never got why they couldn't just say PC Principal was a donor. That way, you can technically avoid the stigma of sleeping with your boss. Just say something like, I wanted a baby and PC Principal donated the necessary materials for my procedure. It would be very PC of him. Strong woman ends up zoning out so much that she doesn't notice the baby's escaping. Turns out the PC babies regularly sneak off in order to spread social awareness. They even have their own band of celebrity status, kind of like the Muppet Babies. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll order a Black Russian. Wonder what they thought about Gonzo. The pair realized that despite their frustration, some good has come out of the Buddha box. Everybody is too distracted to pay attention to the couple, meaning they can now remove all pretense and, at long last, be a family. Aww! Which doesn't explain later episodes, like Board Girls, where they don't even try to hide the fact that they're parents. Buddha boxes are not in those episodes, people. Just saying, after all the emphasis they put on it. But yes, Board Girls does exist. And say what you want about the trans rep, I have problems with it, but I do like how it challenges PC Principal and Strong Woman. Strong Woman is competing in a competition about physical strength and endurance. And one of the competitors is Heather Swanson, a trans athlete. But before we get to that, we have to take a look at the PC babies. You don't like Mulan? No, because Mulan is a female that identifies as male and yet the movie doesn't take the time to address real trans issues. Well, also the controversy about where the live action movie was filmed, how the sequel animation sucked, how- Okay, now we're talking about Heather Swanson. One of the competitors is Heather Swanson, the trans athlete who was previously Blade Jaggard, Strong Woman's ex-boyfriend. Miss Swanson, how does it feel to be competing today? I can't tell you how free I feel. While PC Principal and Strong Woman support trans athletes, they only support those who are trying to navigate society and live as their chosen gender. So, you know, actual trans people. Heather, as hard as it is to believe, is not actually trans but rather a misogynistic lying liar who wants to get back at Strong Woman for their breakup. Strong Woman, you still dare to call yourself that? Your name is a joke. Shut up, Heather. Ooh, sounds like someone here is a transphobe. Sorry, Heather. For possibly the first time in his life, PC Principal begins to harbor feelings that are not exactly PC such as disliking Heather. Are you feeling what I'm feeling? What do you mean? I don't know what it is, but something about that woman just doesn't seem right. And to think about what he said about Caitlyn Jenner, the thing that stops him, his children, as they refuse to see the nuance in any situation. To them, as far as they know, their father is being a bigot. And heck, the rest of the world sees it that way too. Mostly because Heather makes Everybody think that PC Principal is just a transphobe. I know we're all a little afraid to have any opinions on this stuff, but uh, there can be situations where it's not so easy to- Oh, corn nuts. PC Principal, you should make her a uh, hangover cure. I am sure she would love that. PC Principal tries to attack Heather for spewing all of this hateful stuff, then Heather retaliates by making him a pariah in the media. <laughs> PC 
PC principal doesn't want to go home. When I go back, all they're going to see is a big, fat hypocrite. And now I've just used a word to shame people with weight issues. Well, at least you didn't call yourself a hateful nickname like Marfa Dumtra. Yes, all I need is a slushy, and I'm complete. He decides the only thing he can do is make peace with Heather, even if she doesn't deserve it, because trans or not, she harassed his family and demeaned his wife. Or girlfriend, one of those two. They strike me as domestic partners. The people who saved the day? Girls. Heather goes to a school assembly and says she's better than all the other girls there. But they dare her to beat Nicole at a board game. As you can probably guess, Nicole wins. You only won because you dumb girls memorized the rule books. When I play games, I just want to be a pirate or a spaceman. When Heather defeated, PC Principal finally feels comfortable enough to go home. Ah, Dada, I love you. I, I don't understand. They don't care. They must see the nuance to this whole situation. Well, I mean, they're also babies. I'd be surprised if they would even remember who Heather Swanson was. However, the most recent PC Principal episode is Pajama Day. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't like it. I like what they did with the PC principal, I just don't like the episode in general. It was the first episode to air after the future specials, and you can see they got really rusty. Every joke felt like it went on 50 years too long, especially anything involving Garrison, the montage too, and they already covered the topic of masking up in the specials. It just felt like they were beating a dead horse. What are you, Jared Fogle? Like Mr. Mackey said, it really should have focused on the Met Gala. PC Principal assumes that the 4th grade class is discriminating against Garrison, so he decrees they are not allowed to wear their pajamas on Pajama Day. You heard me! No Pajama Day for this class! Now maybe you remember to have some respect for your teacher! Ugh, oh, I'm sure you remember how grade school was like. That's a horrible punishment! And PC Principal is the type of principal where he sticks to a decision, regardless of the reason. No matter how much the kids apologize or beg, he will not reinstate Pajama Day, simply because he thinks he'll look weak. If I change my mind now, I look weak. Okay, but I don't think this is gonna end up the way you want it to. The only way he'll reinstate it, if Garrison goes straight to PC Principal, and personally says that the class has performed and they deserve it. I don't think I need to explain what happens or how they fail doing this. Eventually, he relents and says that the class can wear pajamas and he'll resign. You do something that you think is right out of principle. That's why I wanted to be principle. You know, I'm kind of on Wendy's side. Hard to believe, but I am. PC Principal does find a loophole in order to keep his job. Opposite day. So we will be having breakfast for lunch in the cafeteria, and anything else you've been told to do, you can now do the opposite. Well, PC Principal has way more depth than I thought he did. Has he overstayed his welcome? Probably not. He's not my favorite character, but I don't think he's that bad. Anyhow, thanks for 75k. A special is forthcoming. And I can't wait to see you at any possible conventions. Bye!